Hey guys, welcome back to Critical Flick. Today I'll be reviewing Halloween Kills. So I know this is a little behind, you know, we're about a month back in our backlog of reviews that we haven't filmed yet. So I figured I'd start off with one of the biggest movies from the Halloween season. So this movie is a direct sequel to the 2018 Halloween film that came out. And people really gravitated towards that. I really did enjoy that movie. This one just, it really doesn't live up to that movie. And it really does suffer from the fact that it's being split up into two films. Because you just know from the get-go that it's not going to have an ending. I felt very unsatisfied with the way they decided to end it because it is leading to a second film. And I didn't love that Jamie Lee Curtis doesn't really get to do a lot in it. I liked in the last one she was kind of more of a, a badass character trying to finally take on Michael and stop all of this madness. And this one she's just in the hospital and she jabs herself with some medication to get up and like she's going to go do something. And they kind of just roam around the hospital and ends right back up in the bed again. There were some good moments with her and some of the characters, but at the end of the day, she didn't really ever get to confront Michael. And I don't know, that's like the main part of this little storyline, I feel. So it kind of missed that whole point. There were some really cool flashback scenes, which is something I did enjoy from the original night of Halloween. So I did like they threw that into some of the fans, but everything else about it for me, it just didn't feel like a Halloween movie. I mean, it's, it's really, really cheesy for 90% of the runtime. I get it. I know a lot of the Halloween movies that aren't the higher echelon ones are kind of cheesy. So in the grand scheme of things, it's not as bad as those films. Just compared to what we got in 2018 and the original film, of course, it just doesn't live up to that level to me. Sidney Michael Hall plays a grown up Tommy in this film. And I, I really couldn't stand the character. It's not really the actor's fault. Obviously, he's written that way. I have loved some of his films growing up. I love The Breakfast Club. I love Sixteen Candles, Weird Science. He's a staple in some of the films that I grew up on. But man, he's just there's a lot of overacting. It's really intense and crazy and just it felt silly. He didn't feel like a real it didn't feel like a real person. And I don't know. That completely missed for me the whole storyline with him. Weird little subplots in it. I don't know. It just felt like it was a movie that they just wanted to make two of them. And they're like, how can we stretch out the runtime enough to make it be its own standalone movie, but then it doesn't have the plot to back that up? There were some solid kills in it. If you're someone who goes to these movies really looking for the gore factor, there's a lot. There's a lot of people dying in it and a lot of graphic ways. So it lives up to that slasher mentality. But like I said, the story itself just isn't really there. It's been a little while since the movie came out. So I feel like I can talk about spoilers. There was one scene in particular where they're chasing around this mentally ill man who they think is Michael Myers. I have no idea at all how they thought that that was Michael Myers. And they end up making him kill himself. And it's really depressing and really sad. And I understand the point of that scene was to be, you know, mob mentality can be a bad thing. I don't know. It just felt so poorly executed and it just really didn't make sense. It was like this kind of weird little thing where they're running around the hospital. It was almost silly. And then this guy kills. It's just, I don't, I didn't understand that why that needed to be in the film. And at the very end, Michael fights off a whole gang of people by himself because they're just really dumb and none of it made any sense. And they just all had guns and stuff and they just decided to not do anything and let this guy with the kitchen knife just kill all of them. I don't know. I, like I said, it feels like they shoehorned it in. They're like, oh, this is the ending. They're going to, you know, it's going to stop him, whatever. But you know, as the audience, it's not the ending. And then they just are like, oh, yeah, he's going to get up and just kill like 16 people by himself when they have weapons and he's already down, like basically dead. I don't know. I just didn't love it. Uh, maybe you enjoy the movie more than me. Maybe you went into it and kind of embraced the silliness of it. You knew what you were expecting and you enjoyed it. I don't know. I just feel compared to the last one in the original film, which is one of one of, if not my favorite horror movie of all time, just doesn't live up to it. So again, let me know what you thought about Halloween kills. Like I said, maybe you enjoyed it a lot more than me. Maybe you really disliked it as much as I did, but you know, it was free. We were waiting for this movie to come out for years. They threw it up. We could just watch it on our own accord. So that was enjoyable. But if I would have seen this in the movies, I would have been definitely disappointed. So again, thanks for watching. Remember to like and subscribe. See you guys next time.